everyone, Mel Bro again. Today I thought I would talk to you about terrorism. Terrorism has pretty much filled the news and political debates in our classrooms since 9-11. Those of you who are young enough that your first understanding of terrorism or your first memories of terrorism were 9-11 may not understand the full history of terrorism or the motivations of terrorism. Unfortunately, there are a lot of supposed experts, sociologists, and political pundits out there who continue to try to convince the American people that terrorists want to kill us because of something we're doing. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Those are people who don't understand the history of terrorism or they're just trying to lie to you. It fits into the socialist globalist agenda for them to blame us for everything. The first issue I have with that is if terrorists are attacking us now because we're in Iraq, why were they attacking us before we were in Iraq? If you want to go back to the Gulf War and the presence of American troops on Saudi Arabian soil and how badly that upset Al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden, why were they trying to kill us before that in the 80s, 70s, the 60s? Okay, so maybe it was for our, because of our support of the state of Israel. Well then, why were they trying to kill us before Israel existed as a state, before it was created as a state in 1948 by the United Nations. Because the radical Muslims and the Imams fought on the side of the Nazis during World War II. You probably aren't told that in your history class, but you should be. So their hatred of the West and hatred of America and hatred of anything that isn't Muslim goes way, way back. Back farther than before the United States was even a country. So please, I'm asking you to not buy into the bullshit that you're being fed and that you have been fed since childhood. I would like to discuss some simple basics of terrorism so that you can get a better understanding of it. First, terminology. Since 9-11, there has been a massive misuse of terminology by reporters, newscasters, politicians, even people who claim to be experts who uh, get paid to sit on CNN and MSNBC and talk about terrorism. Well, I would question someone's expertise if they can't even use the right terminology. First, anti-terrorism versus counter-terrorism. Anti-terrorism is a defensive action that you take as a potential victim of terrorism in order to mitigate the effects of a terrorist act, prevent a terrorist attack, or make your targeted facility less likely to be attacked. Counterterrorism is an offensive action that's used to either preempt a future attack, respond to an ongoing attack, or retaliate after an attack. So they're, they're two very different philosophies. The philosophies of anti-terrorism are defensive, and the philosophies of counterterrorism are offensive. They can work hand-to-hand, -hand, and in fact they do. They're, they're both pieces of the, the terrorism puzzle, per se, from from a defensive standpoint and from a warfighting standpoint, but they're completely different philosophies. The next topic on terrorism that I want to discuss with you is the old saying, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. Again, bullshit. You've heard it said many times, usually by a terrorist or someone who used to be a terrorist. There's a distinct difference between being a rebel, a freedom fighter, and a terrorist. Rebels and freedom fighters target government facilities, government operatives, and the military. Their goal is to overthrow that government and take it over and provide a new government for their people. They have to have the support and understanding of the people that they hope to someday rule over when they gain power. So they don't typically attack civilians. They attack, they attack government and military targets. Terrorists attack civilians intentionally because their goal is to intimidate and coerce the population into overthrowing their own government and handing it over to the terrorists. It's a completely different philosophy, completely different ideology. So the next time one of your college professors says one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter, stand up and say bullshit because it just isn't true. When you're thinking about defense against terrorism as a family member, as an individual, or as a community leader, 
you need to essentially think of it the same way you would a natural disaster. It can come at any time. It can be any type of attack, any type of disaster. And the resources that you need and the actions that you need to take are essentially the same. You have to make sure that you have shelter, food, supplies, and in some cases weapons and ammunition. So if you're already into preparing for a survival type scenario for a natural disaster or collapse of a world economy or the end of the world as we know it, the typical shit hits the fan scenario, you're already prepared for a terrorist act and how to respond to it. Because essentially it's the same thing. All you need to do is make sure that your family is safe, make sure they have a rally point somewhere where they can meet up if the uh, typical place where they would be, their place of business, their place of education, or, their, or your home, are no longer in a safe zone. You need to have a rally point somewhere where you can meet, something predetermined that if the signal is sent out, it's not safe to go home, then you already know where you're going to go, whether that's a relative's house in another city, another state, another county, or somewhere within your own city that is centrally located and everyone will have an easy time getting there. And then making sure that you have enough cash on hand to buy any necessities that you might need. Um, if it's a large attack, there may be a situation where a power is down, ATMs aren't working, the money isn't gone. Um, it, it, I'm not talking about a, a global economic collapse, I'm just talking about an inability to get to your money. So you need to keep money on hand and, and some experts say one month's salary in cash somewhere where you can get your hands on it in an emergency because you may not be able to get to an ATM or to a bank in order to get the money out and that will prevent you from getting the, the things necessary for your family's survival. So that's one of the most important things to make sure that you have access to is cash. The rest is shelter, food, and medicines all the things that you would think about <clears throat> when preparing for a natural disaster. If you can outfit your home to where you can bug into your house in a survival scenario and it's the same borders, situation, north or terror. south. For the most powerful nation on earth, we're also the easiest to infiltrate. We're not stopping them from coming in. Just because the terrorists who flew the planes on 9-11 happened to get here by overstaying their visas doesn't mean that the next wave of terrorists are going to use that same method. Walking across the Mexican border, being an OTM, as the Customs and Border Protection calls it, other than Mexican, is the easiest way to get into the country. So it isn't a matter of enforcement in regulation or in visas. It's a matter of securing our country. It's a matter of securing our borders. The war that's currently raging on our southern border, the Mexican drug war, if that's what you want to call it, is another form of terrorism. It's narco-terrorism. They're intentionally targeting, attacking, and murdering civilians in order to intimidate them against notifying the police of their activities in those areas. They're attacking military, police, and government targets as well, but they have no issues with walking into a nightclub and killing 30 people in a night just to intimidate the population of that city into not notifying or informing on the drug cartel's activities. How do we deal with these issues? How do we deal with narco-terrorism? How do we deal with international terrorism? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. It's a bullet. A 45 to the brain will change a terrorist permanently every time. Unfortunately, our pacified, sissified, politically correct society today thinks that we can somehow change a terrorist into a decent human being and he will no longer want to kill us. Again, that's bullshit. They don't want to kill us for any reason other than that's their nature. That's what they want. They want violence and chaos because their goal is to take over our society. Their goal is the defeat of Western society and the installation of Islamic rule. Plain and simple. Not all Muslims believe that way. Not every Muslim is a terrorist. Everyone knows that. So please, don't flame me with that kind of stupid shit. This is about terrorism. The only permanent way to affect change in a terrorist is with a bullet. And until we get back to hunting them and destroying them instead of trying to change them, terrorism is going to be a part of life for many years to come.